Hey, welcome back once again. Last time we saw how a MOSFET is used to control a resistive load. I recommend you to watch that video to understand the basics of MOSFET switching. This time we'll see how a MOSFET behaves when there is an inductive load in the circuit. So let's start. For those who have already watched that video, we'll go through the basics once again. MOSFET has three terminals which are drain, gate and source. MOSFETs are easily used for switching applications to control a load. There are two type of enhanced mid mode MOSFETs which are categorized as N-channel and P-channel MOSFET. We'll use an N-channel MOSFET to control a load in this video. To turn on an N-channel MOSFET, we need to provide sufficient gate to source voltage to the MOSFET so that its input capacitor charges. And to turn off a MOSFET, we remove gate to source voltage from the MOSFET and discharge the input capacitor. There are a lot of inductive loads which we use in many of our circuits. The best inductive loads are motor, relays, transformers, and speakers, etc. Well, before we jump off to the MOSFET behavior, we should know some basics related to the inductor. We have already seen the working of inductors in many of my DC to DC converter videos. Let's brush up this concept once again. This is the basic diagram of a circuit where MOSFET is used as a low side switch and inductive load is connected to the supply. And its other terminal is connected to the drain of the MOSFET which controls the turning on and off an inductive load. Let's apply some PWM pulses to the gate of the MOSFET. When the gate to source threshold voltage is applied, the drain to source voltage goes to zero, current starts flowing to the circuit and MOSFET turns on. But when we remove the gate to source voltage, we see a sudden voltage spike in the drain to source voltage of the MOSFET and this voltage comes back to normal supply voltage and MOSFET turns off. We turn on the MOSFET again in the second pulse. We provide the gate to source voltage and drain to source voltage goes to zero. After this, when we turn off the MOSFET, this voltage spike comes back again and goes back to the normal supply voltage. This behavior keeps repeating at every turn on and turn off cycle. Well, these spikes are present in the waveform for a very short period of time, which are of a very high amplitude, and sometimes it goes beyond the safe operating area of the drain to source voltage limitation of the MOSFET. And this MOSFET will damage, which will short all the MOSFET terminals within a small period of time. We have discussed the safe operating area of the MOSFET in a previous video. Please click here to watch that video. Well, this happens because the inductor opposes change in current. Whenever the MOSFET is turned on or turned off, there is a change in the flow of current in the circuit. The inductor stores the electromagnetic energy inside of it. So when the MOSFET is turned on, the current will flow to the inductor. And when we turn off the MOSFET, the current stops flowing to the circuit. This inductor doesn't like that and it forces the flow of current through the circuit in the same direction. Hence, due to change in current with respect to the time and the inductance of the inductor, it induces some voltage at this point, which is known as the flyback voltage of the inductor. So when the MOSFET turns off, this flyback voltage and the supply voltage adds up at this point and we get the huge spike across the MOSFET. After some point, this drain to source voltage comes back to the supply voltage. Well, to minimize this, we need to find a way where the energy stored in the inductor should dissipate or be sent back to the supply. The easiest way to do that is to put a diode in parallel with the inductor and it solves our problem very easily in a cost effective way. When a MOSFET turns off, the current flows to this diode because the flyback voltage acts as a voltage source. Diode goes into forward bias and current flows to the diode 
which discharges this inductor and energy goes back to the supply voltage. This diode has many names such as flyback diode, anti-parallel diode, reverse bias diode or free wheeling diode. Because this diode is acting like a free wheel which goes with the flow of this current. Well, we understood why we need a diode for an inductive load to control it. But when we use this diode, it adds some limitation in our circuit as well. Let's say now the MOSFET is turned off. If we need to turn on the MOSFET again, this diode exhibits some strange characteristics. When the MOSFET was turned off, this diode was forward biased and current was flowing to the diode. When the MOSFET is turned on, the current will flow from the supply through the inductor so the diode will be reverse biased. When a diode is switched from forward to reverse bias, a reverse current flows for a short period of time through the diode due to its intrinsic property. And the time period for which this current flows is known as the reverse recovery time of the diode. If we see the graph of the forward current of the diode, initially it is in positive x-axis region when the MOSFET is turned off. Now when the MOSFET is on, and the diode is off, still a small amount of current flows in a negative direction, which comes back to normal stage after some time. And if you see the waveform of this diode in a DSO, it looks like this. And this is the reverse recovery time. This current adds up for a short period of time to the inductor current when the MOSFET turns on. So total drain current increases for a short period of time in the MOSFET. This reverse recovery time and current plays a very important role in the MOSFET switching, which we'll see in the next video where we will understand how a MOSFET behaves when there is an inductive load with waveforms. Till then, stay tuned. I've added all the reference on this topic in the description. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you liked this video. Subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.